Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Okay, how do we do this here? Oh, it's running right now? Yeah. <laughs> Red leather, yellow leather. Are, are we at... Uh, is this thing on? Is this thing on? The French River in Ontario, Canada. An unusual, intricate, and visually dazzling waterway. I wouldn't hazard an attempt to summarize its history, most of which we don't really know. The part that we do know, from roughly 1600 and on, is storied, rich, and fascinating. Most of this ancient highway is now a provincial park. Like so many others, I fell in love with it the very first time I came here. It's a complex series of lakes, bays, pools, channels, and rapids that flow from Lake Nipissing into Georgian Bay. For recreational canoeists and kayakers, it doesn't get much better than this. Join Scott and myself as we dip our paddles into this little slice of magic once again. Along the way, we'll visit some trips from the past and get a good taste of what has become my favorite place to canoe and camp. If you've never been to the French, you may get the desire to go after watching this little film. And if you do decide to come, do not forget your camera. Every now and then, it hits you. That 30 seconds in time and space that just takes your breath away. And when it hits, you feel no pain. Well, hello there. I usually get pretty jacked up as the time nears. Preparing and the drive-in to the put-in are almost as good as the trip itself. Between COVID and family matters, there would only be room enough for one trip this year. So I was particularly stoked about this little getaway to one of my favorite spots on the map. Campers. We're getting out of town, getting out of Dodge. It's the start of the second wave. We're getting out, we're getting out of here. God, I am just terrible at these on-camera things. I feel lucky to be getting away, really. Didn't manage to get out in the spring. Crispy cool morning here, heading north. It's gonna be a two-man trip. Scott and myself heading out to the French River. We're gonna poke around in the main outlet Typically, Scott and I have been going to the uh, Pickerel River Outlets area, which is fantastic. But uh, we decided to like, mix it up a little bit this time. So we got five days, four nights. It's been a pretty warm fall. Now the temperatures have dropped quite a bit and a uh, high of 10 down to freezing at night. Scott and I are both uh, piloting our own boats. Tomorrow is supposed to pour. So whatever, maybe we'll uh, make camp and hunker down for the day tomorrow. Maybe do some day trips. We're uh, keeping our itinerary pretty open, allowing ourselves just a lot of wiggle room. I don't have my uh, stills camera with me on this trip. So I left all that heavy glass at home and basically just brought a couple of GoPros with me. Kind of limited in your focal lengths. We can deal. It can be wide, it can be close. See, it doesn't matter. You don't need all that expensive equipment. It's gonna leave me just a little more time to observe, enjoy. Uh, this trip's shaping up to be interesting. I think that our biggest obstacle is gonna be the wind. It's supposed to be gusting 25 to 40 out of the southwest, which is exactly the direction we're headed, so could get interesting out on the water today. 
couple of old men out braving the conditions. What do you think? Tukes? Tukes? Tukes or these? No, these are good for now. Tuke and Dine? Any words of wisdom for our fellow campers? <laughs> no, I have nothing wise to say. <laughs> you want to cross over a bit? Stay to the left? Yeah, let's get a little further down where it's narrow though before we cross yeah. over. Yeah. Oh, there's some good stuff here. It's good to be back in the boats again. What do you make of it? It's just quite cloudy, but also quite sunny. So she's kind of sun cloudy. I haven't named my boat yet. I was gonna say the old such and such is taking a beating. Oh, such and such. HR such and such. That's, that, maybe that's it right there. <laughs> All right. Just tucked in. The winds are gusting like crazy. 30, 35, standstill kind of stuff. The wind is supposed to start decreasing hourly. We're gonna move on. It might not be a good sight if we need to hunker down in the rain tomorrow. It's not the best setup. I'm looking for the primo setup. Nothing but primo, please. You can have the very best. Nice little find. Probably gonna want that tomorrow. We've arrived at the elbow part of the French River main outlet and have decided to put down at this nice protected site. I think I'm gonna go up on the right hill. here. Stone porch here. Yeah, that's nice. Up out of the water. Yeah. With camp made, we grabbed the canoes and headed out into the looming dusk and into some nearby dense brush in search of firewood. We knew we might be under the tarp a little bit over the next while, so we made sure to get a little extra. Over dinner and drinks, we discussed loose plans for the remainder of the trip. What do you think? Get up and travel in the And then we started rehashing memories and stories from previous French adventures. 
of which there are many. Yeah, I know. It's super cool. Okay, and day one, the rains have come as we suspect they would. Uh, we got ourselves tucked away just in time, I think, and uh, yeah, it looks like we're in for a fair bit of it over the next 24 hours, so. We stockpiled some wood and got everything as waterproofed and ready as we could, and right on cue. There it is. So, off to sleep, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. <sighs> Before we move into day two, let's roll back the hands of time about 18 years. Definitely the pre-tumble home era. It's... <laughs> Scott has been the opener for a good portion of my vids over the years. These longer trips to the Pickerel River outlets area of the French really had an impact on me. Early stirrings of the need to document these experiences and share them somehow. This was a few years before YouTube came online. Most of these older vids lived only on a few DVDs I made for friends. These little films certainly lack polish, but they really do give a good sense of the wonder and discovery that we all shared. It's kind of hard to describe the landscape here. Rolling, undulating, evolving formations, shaped and honed for countless thousands of years. Eye candy for days. From this exact point, I took a picture. This picture. I entered it into an Ontario Parks photo contest and won. It wasn't until recently when I replaced my older Parks Ontario map with a newer one that I realized they had used the photo on the map's front cover. Based on the look that I got, I'm pretty sure that the dude I bought it from didn't believe me when I blurted out, I took that picture 20 years ago. Uh-huh. Sure you did, buddy. Two years prior to that trip, was our first outing to the Blue Shoot area. If you're a novice with whitewater, as we certainly were back then, the rapids in the French are a great place to get your feet wet. Here are my buddies, Lex in the bow and Yarko in stern, taking their maiden run down Blue Shoot. Yarko's dad built this cedar strip beauty, which we were all quite jealous of back in those days when we were still renting canoes. While there is some danger in swimming in the rapids, there's really no better way to gain the proper respect that moving water demands. Knowing how to position yourself, when to swim, when not to. This knowledge may save your skin someday when you do dump. It's also just a whole hell of a lot of fun. gets full marks for both style and grace.
This entire region is awesome for exploring. In boats or on foot. Something amazing around every bend. Something you've never seen over every hill. I like to get up before the sun comes up. And if possible, be out on the water when it does come up. I'm usually up around five to have the morning movement. So I try my best to not climb back into the warm sleeping bag. It's always worth it. resources for inspiration and information about the French come from Tony Harting, who wrote a book, French River, Canoeing the River of the Stick Wavers. His first words in the preface, this book is the offspring of a passionate love affair. It all started in the spring of 1985 when I was visiting the French River for the first time in the company of my wife, Rhea, and some friends from the Wilderness Canoe Association. While we were camping on an island and enjoying the fabulous waves of Blue Chute, I felt the first stirrings of a very special feeling that over the years and through the many visits blossomed into a stimulating relationship that I've not had with any of the other rivers I've paddled over the years. I know exactly what Tony speaks of. This waterway, in particular, is special somehow. Maybe it's the topography. Maybe it's the light. I've never really been able to put a finger on it. All I know is I keep coming back. And on each return, it feels just a little bit more like home.
Well, we survived our first <coughs> deluge of rain last night. Man, we just got things uh, tucked away, <coughs> got all the kit squared away just before the uh, rains began, and then I think it rained all night. heavy back there. And yeah, maybe we will be in for a little bit more wet stuff today. It's supposed to be. We set ourselves up to stay put for the day. crazy is it that yesterday we didn't see another canoe or canoeist or camper of any kind right up until we got all the way to the elbow like we didn't even see any canoes at sites but there's a, a red canoe at the site that's across from the one that we're at that's the only other canoe that we've seen We had thought about going to Algonquin, but the last couple times I went there this time of year, right around peak color, it's kind of a zoo. And the colors are quite a display in Algonquin, more hardwoods and stuff than here. But solitude is uh, a precious commodity. And we certainly have that here. You can hear the rapids just west of us here. Maybe we'll go check those out today. Gonna need this tonight. Well, the rain let up for now, and uh, we're gonna go take a little peek at some of the other campsites around here, around the elbow. Let's look at some options. off our wood while we're here. Success. Nice one. There's lots of other stuff back there that looks good like originally and then it was just mush. That is good. It's like an extra half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs>
That was the campsite tour. Pretty exciting. We're gonna get a little day trip going here of some sort. Winds are changing direction on us. Crazy times. We knew that the water levels were pretty high, just based on the fact you couldn't see any lower water mark on the shore. Later in the trip, we ran into some local fishermen and they said it was the highest they'd seen it in 35 years. The set of falls that we were making our way towards was a bit over two kilometers away. We could still hear it quite clearly. The high water levels let us go a little bit further into some of these cool inlets along the way. I was just a bit leery of stumbling across a black bear in these narrow passageways. Maybe I'm downwind. She can't hear me coming, she's got her cubs. Most of my encounters with bears have actually been in and around the French River area. Well, no surprise bears. We would, however, have an encounter with one the next day not too far from here. Imagine the forces at work to shape and mold this crazy slab of the Canadian shield. How about that? You could shelter under there. Let's do it. Hang the hammocks in there. Go check out another one. Huh? Let's go go hit the next one. All right. I'm into like poking around all these little... I like to poke around in all the little nooks and crannies. Pretty amazing. That cedar tree still alive. And how old must it be? Yeah. Dude, look how fast we're going. We're not even doing anything. We were paddling this fast once yesterday at any given point. Wow. That's like three knots. Look at it roiling over here. This is most likely the boiler unit 
for an alligator warping tug. These OG steampunk tugs would haul the log booms. The wrecks of two of them are below us, visible when the water is low. In the late 1800s, this place was part of a thriving logging community, long since gone. All the time from working with it. I hope it doesn't explode. I know. Imagine the pressures that must have been going on in there. Hope that guy knew what he was doing, riveting. Pretty amazing. Woo. No wonder we could hear it so far away. Wow, so awesome here. My first thought when I saw this was, did the river at this very spot take this man's life? Or was it just that so much of his life was this river and this is where he wanted his ashes to be put? you first. <laughs> I'm fishtailing. There's a decent log there, maybe. There's another little chunker there, too. Wrestling this thing into the boat will be a hilarious little bit of footage. 
it was pure shenanigans. Can you grab me one out of my little green thing here? Oh, or maybe get one here. The rain settled right back in. Oh. And so did the cold. <laughs> so we got ourselves a little burner going and cozy it up to it. Scott and I have been tripping on the French sitting around fires, telling stories, and solving the world's problems for over 20 years now. These quiet natural spaces just can't be beat as a backdrop for airing out your thoughts, joys, and fears. On this trip, we talked at length about the pandemic, the looming U.S. election, and quite a bit about our families. It's kind of hard to fathom how many conversations I've had with Scott about girlfriends and wives and kids and parents and all of it. We've been through quite a bit together and make pretty good sounding boards for each other. I remember conversations with Scott while on the French about how great it would be to bring kids here years before we had them. Time flies. But the river is much the same now as it was when we first started coming here. I guess that's the, it's kind of the most difficult thing after having been divorced is that, you know, in the process of sort of building a family with somebody, that kind of becomes your whole identity, you know? And I mean, your, your dad, your husband, your, your, you're that guy, like that becomes your whole identity. And yeah, you have your own sh but those just kind of become like accessories to that identity, you know? <laughs> Like, my dad also goes camping, you know? My husband also likes techno music. But, the, you know, you become like the patriarch of the family, you know? It's kind of like your gig. And then when that's taken away, I don't know how I define myself anymore, you know? Because I don't define myself the way I did before all of that. So, I'm like, I'm a different person now, you know? But, but who am I now? Like, who of that person am I now, you know? Yeah. Just prior to the pandemic, I took a last-minute October trip to the French with some friends, Jordan and Laura. You might remember Jordan from the Spanish River video. French River four days in and around the uh, Blue Chute area. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually make a full video of this trip. I think I want to just spend the majority of my time on photography. So this video might just be more a little montage of moments. A little moments montage by Tumblehoe. Enjoy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'll get that shit that never. What? Wine. Fishing line? Wine. A oh, wine. <laughs> Fishing wine. <laughs>
Jordan's over there with his pepper gun looking for some duckies. It is a little bit, but as long as you keep the nose into it, it'll be fine, I'm sure of it. <laughs> maximum dynamic pressure now. Yeah, everything looks good here. About eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Far low level, aren't you? 35,000 feet per second. Cut off. Come 
flying velocity 35,570 feet per second, altitude 177 nautical miles. Looks like you're well on your way now. There's something really wild about the way sound travels over this landscape. Phasing, echoing, frequencies shifting with the breeze. Sometimes we camp close to the rail line, just so we get the trippy experience of hearing one of the trains pass in the night. Yeah, we should have just gone car camping. Can't feel my arms. <laughs> it's a chilly Friday. Huh? Chilly Friday. Talking to the camera. Huh? Mm -hmm. What? What are you saying to me? Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, you to me? So, yeah, very cold. Feels like about four degrees, five degrees. Not much to report. Bit of a low key trip. Cool, rainy, damp. We're gonna have the wind in our face going out. Sometimes you just don't get lucky. And the wheel of wind. So we're gonna pack up, probably get out of here in about an hour after we have some coffee. Just finished some breakfast. side of that little island. Yeah, that long skinny one. Is that a dock over there to the left? Yeah. <clears throat> Weird. big stills camera with the long lens sitting right in front of me just waiting for those rare wildlife moments you know like when a bear raises its cute little head out of the bushes just 50 feet away staring at you mockingly as if to say I don't do this very often you really should have brought your big camera I knew exactly when he was going to turn tail. The moment I got my little GoPro up and running. All good. Just seeing a bear out here is pretty darn cool. And eagles, man, they're making a comeback. We never saw them as kids around here. You see them all the time now. In the most recent trip with my kids, we were seeing two or three of them a day. Huge birds. Very cool. Good little snippet of hope in a time when it's hard to come by. We're like right here on the back side of that little island. 
we come around here, we drift across this way basically. And I think we kind of tucked in behind these two little islands on the way down. Yeah. And then there's this big open bay, we can tuck in behind this guy, and that first sight is there. What do you think? There's a whole bunch of campsites up. Oh, he's thinking about other campsites. Up the left. Look at he's thinking about other campsites. Which we've never explored, really. I whipped up a couple of strong cocktails and fished a little cigar out for us. And that was enough convincing for Scott to stay put. We're gonna go get some wood. Bring in the gloves and the saw. Good for a week. I spent three years in the Canadian Navy on a small, old destroyer, a sub hunter. Whew. I was a naval combat information operator. The trade motto was collect, display, evaluate, disseminate. It's kind of what I'm doing out here. Harvesting light. Did you take one last look around the site? Yeah. Site number 618. Pretty nice spot. Great front porch. That was an amazing moonrise last night. Which I think I got a pretty cool little time lapse of. Some pretty dark clouds creeping up behind us there. lean to the right so that the paddle drips outside of the boat.
Man, those are nice cabs, eh? Yeah. Little pot belly stove going, making some bacon. Gonna nail a few fish off the front porch. <laughs> Oh yeah, we just have to I'll just take you out to the little island we have in French Moon. French Moon. <laughs> it's a small, uh, humble little island, but uh, we're quite fond of it. Right now. So the, the view can be quite substantial. <laughs> so how many other people are on the island? Oh no, it's just us. Just us left. Just us we on the whole thing ourselves, yes. Paid 1375 for it back the year before Confederation. <laughs> Seems like a fortune at the time. It's worked out to be a pretty good bargain for us all. Dude, we're about to get wet. It's coming! Should have done a quick tarp. I struggled to edit the tail end of this video. There wasn't much in the way of drama. No injuries. No forest fires. No redemption trout. Just paddling. Camping. Nature. Exploring solitude. This trip reminded me a lot of my first French River solo back in spring of 2014 and that's what I'm gonna end with. Some more incredible sights and sounds from this amazing waterway. Campers, the sun is up. Beautiful day. We got a date with the French River. Oh look at that. Oh no, we're getting excited. We're getting excited. Good morning, canoe heads. So here we are in the uh, French River, the Pickerel River outlets in particular.
to hang out. 